Good evening to everyone. <clears throat> Today, October 14th, 11 p.m. I thought today I could not get time to take a class. Let me spend one hour before I go to sleep with uh, some quick revision. And uh, we thought of starting a trend where uh, early morning 5 a.m. to 8 a.m. 3 ghante padai karenge bilke. 100 MCQs revision karenge every day. So once we do that, we start getting a habit. By the time it is 8 a.m. in the morning, already we have finished three hours of preparation. So pura din, the whole day will look very long. And our confidence is high, no depression, and uh, we will get motivated to read throughout the day. So that is the reason let us start a trend 5 a.m. to 8 a.m. Breakfast with Dr. Murli Bharadwaj for the NEET PG 2020. So that is going to be the theme. They say that excellent is not a one-time happening. It is a habit. It's a habit. Excellence is a habit of doing certain good things on a regular basis. So let's pick up some good habits of waking up early morning at 5 a.m. and then preparing. Good to see Incognito, Abhijit, Vakande and many more. So for now, let's do a quick revision of uh, some of the favorite areas of the examiner. <clears throat> So, yes. View full screen. Uh, enter full screen. Very good. Good to see 38 online students, angry young men and women across the India who want to see an end of this tyranny of being just ambivious and enter into the MD, right? So that should be the whole idea. So let's make the great beginning, doctor. Fractional excretion of sodium. This is one uh, very important uh, concept. Uh, yeah. Let me know whether the screen is full and big enough for all of you to see clearly. Right. So, yes. Fractional excretion of the sodium is a very important concept. One of the frequently asked MCQ. Is the visibility okay for everybody? Can you please tell? Are you able to see the screen clearly? Right. So it is very important to know whether the renal failure is pre-renal, intra-renal or post-renal is very important. So you should know very well as to what we mean by pre-renal. So we have the glomerulus, we have the Bowman's capsule and there is an afferent renal arterial which is bringing the blood and um, here you have the tubules and the water is being retained creatinine is secreted creatinine is secreted so there can be a renal failure because of a decreased renal blood flow or there can be a problem within the glomerulus and the tubular system or there can be a problem outside the kidney post renal so to differentiate between these three, uh, Abhijit is saying, sir, voice is there, but video not playing. Can you please, uh, is it the problem? Uh, but I'm able to see it very clearly, right? Huh. So is it post-renal or pre-renal? How do we be able to 
differentiate is there any way to differentiate yes sir so for that we have this called as fractional excretion of the sodium how do we get this we calculate the urinary sodium into plasma creatinine divided by urinary creatinine into plasma sodium a sodium ka value uh, yeah is the video not playing uh, does anybody have a problem with the video i am not having a problem with the video uh, just press on the refresh button doctor just please press on the refresh button now so numerator mein kya hai doctor urinary sodium denominator mein plasma sodium and uh, what is there in the numerator plasma creatinine and in the denominator you are having urinary creatinine so this is uh, uh, very very important to be remembered so if this fractional excretion of the sodium is less than 1% what is the meaning of less than 1% what is there in the numerator you have urinary sodium is there in the numerator if it is less than 1% means urinary sodium is less it is not high so when will the sodium will not be high in the urine basically what is happening to the sodium the moment the sodium is entering into the glomerular filtrate your tubules are reabsorbing the sodium so that means if your sodium in the urine is less than 1% iska matlab kya hai what is the meaning of that it means to say that the tubules are working they are able to reabsorb the sodium that means it is not intrarenal it is pre renal if the urinary sodium is less so that is the reason you should remember fractional excretion of sodium less than 1% ka matlab hai it is a pre renal pre renal failure is what you need to remember very good prithvi raj rightly says dehydration cardio renal syndrome hepato renal syndrome and the drugs like nsaids as inhibitors they are the ones responsible for the pre renal sodium if it is a pre renal sodium good news or bad news good news kyu iska matlab hai there is no tubular pathology most of the times if the tubules are damaged it is irreversible if it is a pre renal you can be able to give iv fluids increase the plasma volume increase renal plasma flow correct the dehydration and can be able to reverse the azotemia so that is the reason always you will be looking for a reversible cause of the renal failure and pre renal quite often is a reversible cause if you replenish the renal plasma flow is what you need to remember right now if the fractional excretion of the sodium is more than 2% that means what is there in the calculation of fractional excretion of sodium urinary sodium is in the numerator so fractional excretion of sodium more than 2% matlab urinary sodium is high numerator is high that means tubules are not reabsorbing the sodium so that means the problem is tubular dysfunction so what is the causes of the intrinsic renal disease leading to azotemia doctor acute tubular necrosis acute interstitial nephritis vasculitis even vasculitis lead to intrarenal failure is what you need to remember gotcha next there is another quantity called fractional excretion of urea once more the same story urinary urea by plasma urea plasma creatinine by urinary creatinine so that gives you fractional excretion of urea if the fractional excretion of the urea is less than 35% that means to say it is a pre renal if it is more than 50% that means to say it is intrinsic renal disease is what you have to basically remember i am very grateful to 75 online students for this midnight 
neat PG preparation. Ideally, we should sleep by 11 p.m. Ideally, ideal marriages, ideal uh, lifestyles are very impossible, but we need to try for that, right? But early morning waking up at 5 a.m. and preparing up to 8 a.m. together, if we start that practice, let me tell you, doctor, next to 70 days, let us make a promise with each other that early morning 5 a.m. to 8 a.m. rose padai karenge, ek 100 MCQs ka revision karenge. So 100 into 70 days may 7,000 garma garam MCQs ka revision karenge. And we will try to cover as many number of topics as possible, which are high yield, sure short topics. Throughout the day, you have the day available for you to do the self preparation. Once we all sit together and prepare in the morning, early morning. So we will try to uh, take a vow to do the uh, start of the day early and uh, prepare every day for the next uh, 70 days. Now, doctor, what are the causes of the anion gap metabolic acidosis? That is high anion gap metabolic acidosis. Uh, thank you to know Amit Jain is saying, Sir, my Badri Nath ke nazdeek mein hum, fir bhi broadcast bahut clear hai. I think that will be a very good airtel advertisement, right? Uh, and thanks to YouTube. Methanol, uremia, diabetic ketoacidosis, peraldehyde, I for INH, high anion gap metabolic acidosis, iron toxicity, lactic acidosis, ethylene glycol, rhabdomyolysis, salicylates. Yesab jaga kya hota hai doctor? In all these things what do you get? You typically get high anion gap metabolic acidosis. That is what you need to emphatically remember. Now doctor, how do you approach? The acid base disorders, one of the favorite question. Very simple. First look at pH. pH more than 7.4 means it is alkalosis. Then look at PCO2. PCO2. PCO2 is called inhalable acid. If the PCO2 is less than 40, less than 40. That means low acid hai. Our alkalotic pH hai. So how is the PCO2 will become low if you are hyperventilating? Hysterical ho gaya, high bath ho, high bath ho gaya, neat PG paper dekke. Suddenly ek MCQ jo aapko, you did not even imagine it will come. There is nothing like that. All 300 MCQs kaha se aayega? There is a definite calculation for the examiner. Aapko manum hona chahe, kaha se examiner pooch ne wala hai. What are the twist turns examiner is interested? Wo aap prepare hona hai. Preparation is not about big quantity, large volume of preparation. Wo nahi hai. What the examiner want? Wo aapko manum hona chahe. You will make uh, the top rank. So pH more than 7.4 is alkalosis. And the, if that is because of hyperventilation in day, low PCO2 that is respiratory alkalosis then second pH is more than 7.4 and if it is because of a high bicarbonate that is bicarbonate more than 24 is ka matlab hai metabolic alkalosis Barabar. then pH less than 7.4 with a high PCO2 PCO2 is called inhalable acid high PCO2 kitna hai PCO2 more than 40 is called high, is what you need to remember. So that is called respiratory acidosis. Then pH less than 7.4, matlab acidosis, but bicarbonate is low, that means less than 24, that is metabolic acidosis. This is the point you need to emphatically remember. My sap logon ko bol rao, doctor, October 14th midnight masala me bol rao aapko, definitely aane wala topic hai. Right? So once more, I think many times I told the same thing. Teacher means what doctor? Telling the same thing many times until you are compliant with the plan. What is MD General Medicine? 
रोज वही बोलना पड़ता है पेशेंट को अम्मा रिफाइमसिन ले लो अम्मा पी एन आई एन एच ले लो अम्मा बीपी टैबलेट ले लो साल्ट कम करके खाओ दस ओनली थिंग दैट यू कैन टेल टू द पेशेंट रिपीटेडली मल्टीपल टाइम्स एंड इम्फैटिकली बाई टेलिंग ओनली पेशेंट विल गेट अ कन्विक्शन आई वॉन्ट गिव यू दट कन्विक्शन थ्री हंड्रेड एम सी क्यूज का एग्जाम है भैया नीट पीछे इसमें हंड्रेड एम सी क्यूज विदाउट फेल्योर they come from 100 definite topics there is no question paper till now without this 100 topics like contraception carcinoma cervix tuberculosis bhai sa 100 mcqs without failure come from 100 topics next 100 mcqs will come from 200 topics remaining 100 mcqs come from 650 topics. Your yeah, first 100 go half an hour each. You will take 50 hours. Second 100 MCQs coming from 200 topics. You will take half an hour into 200, 100 hours. Last 100 MCQs go 650 ke liye agar time hai to you will take around 300 hours. Barabar. So a first 150 hours ka jo hai na doctor. Je, je, जिसके वजह से आपका टू हंड्रेड एम सी क्यूज का प्रिपरेशन खत्म हो जाएगा वो बराबर करना है आप राइट सो इफ यू हैव नॉट एट गॉट यूर नाइन फिफ्टी थ्री हाई टॉपिक लिस्ट प्लीज डू कॉल अवर हेल्पलाइन नाइन ट्रिपल जीरो एट सिक्स एट थ्री फाइव सिक्स बिकम पार्ट ऑफ अवर व्हाट्सएप स्टडी ग्रुप्स दे विल इंक्लूड यू एंड यू गेट एन ऑपरचुनिटी टू मीट एवरीबडी एंड एवरी टाइम we are starting a session we will intimate you and you are well motivated with lot of other classmates by being in our whatsapp study groups we have around 20000 neat pg aspirants in about 80 whatsapp groups so that is the reason become part of that and prepare self preparation is the best way time waste nahi hota either coaching center udhar coaching center ko bhagne mein bahut time waste ho jata hai ultimately any teacher will tell you the same thing भैया ये लिस्ट पढ़ो ये नंबर याद रखो ये सिंगल लाइनर याद रखो वो ही बोलना पड़ता कोई भी टीचर देर इज नो मिराकुलस टीचर एनी वेयर राइट सो इट्स अ क्वेश्चन ऑफ यू बीइंग गेटिंग मोटिवेटेड रिमेंबर सिंगल लाइनर्स लिस्ट लॉजिकल पॉइंट्स रीजनिंग एवरीथिंग यू शुड गेट रेडी इन ऑल दिस नाइन टॉपिक्स एंड डू रिविजन ऑफ थर्टी थाउजेंड इन द लास्ट फिफ्टीन ईयर्स ऑफ एम्स ऑल इंडिया पीजीएच ऊपर and dnb and fmg equation banks now doctor how do you calculate compensation bhaiya metabolic acidosis hai metabolic acidosis so obviously metabolic acidosis mein why there is acidosis because of the low bicarbonate low bicarbonate if the low bicarbonate led to the development of metabolic acidosis how will the body compensate whenever you have lactic acidosis diabetic ketoacidosis what will you do you will start hyperventilating and you will get rid of the carbon dioxide from your body carbon dioxide is a inhalable acid uh somesh sharma is asking sir from when you are starting 5 to 8 am class from tomorrow early morning tomorrow early morning doctor vada is vada right promise is a promise dekho i am uh, uh, putting an alarm i will wake up at 4:30 am 5 am we will start the class you will have 50 mcqs to take like a quiz after that i will come and discuss then another 50 mcqs then once more discussion microbiology ka Uh, we are uh, currently solving a um, 640 mcq question bank of last 15 years mds question bank very good questions the same questions will come even for md entrance also neat md also right so kal subah se hi shuru karenge aap bhi alarm rakho 4:30 ko 5 o'clock ko wait wake up ke liye right so but before sleeping i thought आज कुछ भी पढ़ाया नहीं आप लोगों को सो इसलिए आई एम लाइक योर क्लासमेट 
नींद नहीं आ रही तो देन आई थॉट बिफोर आई गो टू स्लीप लेट मी डू ए क्विक रिविजन ऑफ यू कॉन्सेप्ट बिफोर आई गो टू स्लीप राइट नाउ डॉक्टर uh let us start let us continue our discussion yeah so how do you compensate metabolic acidosis we compensate the metabolic acidosis by uh hyperventilating and psco2 will leave your body so that is the reason you should remember psco2 is equal to 1.5 into the bicarbonate value plus 8 plus or minus 2 mm mercury you are expecting psco2 what what are you expecting psco2 to become as a compensation when there is a metabolic acidosis you want psco2 to decrease because you will hyperventilate and get rid of the carbon dioxide from your body so that is the reason the psco2 that you are expecting if there is a compensation how much psco2 you are expecting 1.5 into the bicarb value plus 8 plus or minus 2 if the psco2 is less than expected matlab you are expecting psco2 to fall if it has fallen more that means there is a concurrent respiratory alkalosis concurrent respiratory alkalosis if the psco2 is more than expected that is you are expecting psco2 to dig to decrease because when there is a metabolic acidosis you are hyperventilating getting rid of the carbon dioxide from the body your psco2 is supposed to fall but if the psco2 fall is not as much as you expected if the value is more if the value is more then that means there is a concurrent respiratory acidosis so this is what you need to remember but first of all what is that expected psco2 which is supposed to be expected low value of psco2 supposed to be there if you are compensating the metabolic acidosis you should know the calculation samajh mein aa gaya na ha सो so, और एक बार मैं आपको बताता हूं भैया मेटाबॉलिक एसिडोसिस है जरा ध्यान से सुनो मेटाबॉलिक एसिडोसिस है मतलब बाइकार्बोनेट लो होने के वजह से होने वाला एसिडोसिस है मेटाबॉलिक एसिडोसिस टू कॉम्पेंसेट दिस मेटाबॉलिक एसिडोसिस व्हाट विल यू डू यू विल हाइपर वेंटिलेट वॉट विल यू डू यू विल हाइपर वेंटिलेट एंड वॉट विल यू डू बिकॉज ऑफ दैट your pco2 is supposed to fall suppose if it has fallen more than what you expected then what does it mean it means to say concurrently there must be a respiratory alkalosis that will make pco2 fall to be more than what you expected because of the compensation samajh mein aa gaya na then second situation you are expecting pco2 to fall whenever metabolic acidosis is there as a compensation but that fall is not as much as you expected that means pco2 value is little more than the low value you are expecting when will that happen typically whenever there is an associated respiratory acidosis respiratory acidosis concomitantly in addition to metabolic acidosis then the compensatory fall of pco2 will not be as much as what you expected that is what you have to understand samajh mein aa gaya na barabar now same story everything else suppose if there is a acute respiratory acidosis when will you get acute respiratory acidosis doctor acute respiratory acidosis typically when you are not ventilating you got a respiratory depression all carbon dioxide remained in your body aur wo ban gaya acid uske wajah se ho gaya aapko respiratory acidosis how will body compensate the body will compensate by retaining bicarbonate in the kidney kidney will try to retain bicarbonate 
instead of losing into urine it will retain into the body so retained bicarbonate leading to increase in bicarbonate is the way kidney compensates for respiratory acidosis how much bicarbonate will be retained typically it will be 1 millimole of per liter of bicarbonate for every 10 millimeters mercury of rise of PaCO2 normal PaCO2 is 40 above that for every 10 millimeters rise of PaCO2 in a respiratory acidosis there will be a increase of 1 millimole per liter of bicarbonate that is what you need to remember so these values are important doctor similarly chronic respiratory acidosis may what do you expect pa the uh, bicarbonate to increase compensation of kidney to acidosis is always by retaining bicarbonate right but if it is a chronic respiratory acidosis there will be increase of 4 to 5 millimoles per liter of bicarbonate 5 to 4 to 5 millimoles per liter of bicarbonate for every 10 millimeters of mercury rise of PaCO2 above 40 millimeters of mercury that is what you need to appreciate so this is very important calculation doctor favorite MCQ in the tomorrow's exam similarly if the patient is having metabolic acidosis there are two types of metabolic acidosis what is it? anion gap high and anion gap normal metabolic acidosis but yeah how do you calculate anion gap that is very important to understand sodium plus potassium minus bicarb plus chloride is ko kete hai anion gap ye anion gap high bhi ho sakta normal bhi ho sakta jab bhi aadmi ko metabolic acidosis hota hai two types rehta hai ek high anion gap wala ek normal anion gap wala so typically how do you get normal anion gap metabolic acidosis when do you get high anion gap metabolic acidosis very simple sodium and potassium say what are you subtracting bicarb plus chloride if only bicarbonate decreased barabar let us say my chumma values go wrong this is 5 this is 5 this is 3 this is 3 samjho sorry this is uh, 3 this is 2 this is 2 samjho then what will example i am telling normal person may samjho 5 plus 5 10 minus 3 plus 2 5 10 minus 5 means you got a value 5 let us say that is normal now only bicarbonate fell down that means 3 ban gaya 1 this remained chloride remained 2 right so 1 plus 2 kit now 3 5 plus 5 10 minus 3 became 7 that means anion gap increased but suppose if this fall of bicarb from 3 to 1 is accompanied by rise of chloride if the chloride concomitantly happened to rise from uh, the value 2 it has become 4 samjho to kya ho gaya 1 plus 4 5 so 5 5 10 minus 1 plus 4 5 became 5 that means normal hi rahe gaya so if the fall of bicarb is accompanied by a rise of the chloride same time then the anion gap will not change if only bicarbonate happened to fall down without a concomitant rise of chloride then you will get a high anion gap metabolic acidosis this is very very important to remember right abhi amrit puche puch raha hai sir ye anion gap kya hai anion gap kya hai there are confusing term hai what is confusion about anion gap bhaiya sodium plus potassium kya hai cations aap cation se kisko subtract kar rahe hai anions ko subtract kar rahe hai right magar isko kya keh rahe hum what are we calling this instead of Cation se anions ko minus kar rahe. Matlab, you are actually should call this a cation gap. But why are you calling anion gap? That is very important to understand. So you should remember in our body, we have certain 
unmeasured cations unmeasured cations like nh4 plus ammonium ion they are unmeasured cations then you have certain unmeasured anions anions like your albumin like uh, serum proteins they have a negative charge similarly phosphate it is uh, a negatively charged in in sub cheese of vocabulary they have unmeasured anion bolte hain so measured cations kya hai what are measured cations you have sodium plus potassium then what are measured anions chloride plus bicarb abhi let us draw equation unmeasured cations plus measured cations is equal to unmeasured anions plus measured anions obviously no kyunki cationic charge should be equal to anionic charge otherwise blood will be very electrically it won't be neutral it is neutral actually why it is neutral because unmeasured cations is equal to measured cations i mean unmeasured cations plus measured cations is equal to unmeasured anions plus measured anions so isko zara ulta ulta karo typically what do you get unmeasured anions minus unmeasured cations right is equal to measured cations minus measured anions so typically sodium plus potassium which are measured cations minus chloride plus bicarbonate which are measured anions karne se indirectly aap kya kar rahe hai bhaiya unmeasured anions minus unmeasured cations ko calculate kar rahe hai isliye isko kehte hain anion gap cation gap nahi hai to from cations you are minusing uh, anions indirectly it is doing what unmeasured anions minus unmeasured cations isliye isko kehte hain anion gap is what you need to remember gotcha very good very good abhi bharat mein 122 online uh classmate samajh mein aa gaya bhaiya ye anion gap ka matlab kya hai i am very happy anion gap is more than 14 then you call high anion gap metabolic acidosis and the normal anion gap value bhulna nahi single line or mcq hai bhaiya it is 12 it is 12 that's what you need to remember so if a patient is having a anion gap metabolic acidosis the next step you need to do is you need to measure osmolal gap osmolal gap bhaiya osmolal gap kya hota hai measured serum osmolality minus expected serum osmolality there is a normal value of serum osmolality but patient ke blood mein there is a measured serum osmolality if you minus expected serum osmolality from measured serum osmolality you get osmolal gap then how do you calculate expected serum osmolality 2 into sodium plus glucose divided by 18 plus blood urea nitrogen divided by 2.8 will give you the serum osmolality that is very 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 important to remember once more this is a favorite mcq of the examiner doctor 2 into sodium plus glucose by 18 plus blood urea nitrogen by 2.8 will give you the osmolality so patient's actual calculated osmolality minus expected osmolality if you happen to subtract right so then i mean uh, that value is basically called the osmolal gap if the osmolal gap is more than 10 10 then what does it mean to say this high anion gap metabolic acidosis is caused by one of the causes is a substance which is 
a high osmolar substance in the blood is there. So typically propylene, glycol, methanol, ethylene, glycol, a sub is a high anion gap metabolic acidosis they lead to. But at the same time, they being very high osmolar substances, they also lead to high osmolar gap. That is what you need to emphatically understand. Then one more important thing. Whenever a patient is having metabolic acidosis, you should calculate delta delta value. What is the meaning of delta delta value? The change in anion gap divided by the change in bicarb will give you delta delta value. Gotcha? Now, because this change is delta, this change is also delta, right? So change in anion gap divided by change in bicarb will give you delta delta. If the delta delta is less than 1, iska matlab hai, there is both a high anion gap acidosis along with non-anion gap acidosis. Similarly, if the delta delta value is more than 2, that means to say there is both the anion gap metabolic acidosis, high anion gap metabolic acidosis, along with metabolic alkalosis. That is the meaning of the delta delta value more than 2. This is the most important uh, point you need to appreciate. Abhi batao, doctor. Fatafat bolo. How will you approach acid base disturbances? Acid base disturbances is sure shot MCQ. My bolana 100 MCQs come from 100 sure shot topics. Usme ek hai acid base disturbances. Brava? So you should be 100% sure. So always look for the pH. pH less than 7.4 is acidosis. More than 7.4 hota hai alkalosis. Main isko chera aur bada ta hu. Yes. Now, oh my god. You can see it better. Right? Can you see it better? Right. Now, whenever the pH is less than 7.4, what will you look for? How is the PC water? If the PC water is more than 40, that means it is acidosis because of the because of the hyperventilation. That means respiratory acidosis. So, what are the causes of respiratory acidosis? Anything, sorry, not hyper, hypoventilation leading to carbon dioxide accumulation. Right? That is uh, PC water more than 40 means it is respiratory acidosis. Right? So, what are the causes of hyperventilation? Acute lung disease, chronic lung disease, opioids, narcotics, any weak respiratory muscles, they all lead to respiratory acidosis. Then, if the PC water is less than 40 in a patient having acidosis, think of metabolic acidosis. Metabolic acidosis with compensation. Right? So typically pH is less than 7.4, that means acidosis, but PCO2 is less than 40. Think of metabolic acidosis with compensation, that is making the PCO2 to become less than 40. Right? That means actually bicarb come hone ke wajay se ye acidosis ho gaya. So that is what you need to understand. So whenever you have a metabolic acidosis, Look for the anion gap. High anion gap, normal anion gap. If the anion gap is between 8 to 12, you call it as a normal anion gap. So you should remember renal failure, lactic acidosis, ketoacidosis, aspirin, they all lead to high anion gap metabolic acidosis. By a normal anion gap acidosis, renal tubular acidosis, hyperchloremia, and uh, diarrhea. They need to be remembered. Right? Now, if there is an alkalosis, what will you remember, doctor? PCO2 is, if it is less than 40 with alkalosis, that is respiratory alkalosis. Typically, it happens if you have hyperventilation or early salicylic intoxication, early stages, may you will be hyperventilating. That leads to development of respiratory alkalosis. Right? 
Lucky Sharma is asking, tomorrow at what time, sir? 5 a.m. 5 baje, 4.30 call alarm rakho. My, my, I will wake up and uh, I will wake you up also with a hot green tea. Microbiology revision shuru karenge or 100 MCQs discuss karenge. Let us start the habit. Then PCO2 more than 40 in a patient of alkalosis. Then it should be metabolic alkalosis and uh, the uh, there is a respiratory compensation. So vomiting, diuretics, antacids, hyperaldosteronism, they all lead to development of metabolic alkalosis. That is what you need to basically remember. Very good. Varun Ramana is saying Edison's disease is another example of normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. But yeah, excellent doctor. So that is a short story doco about uh, the acid based disturbances. Now, one, one to two Garmadaram points. Garmadaram Huna hai points. Isopropyl alcohol ingestion lead to high anion gap metabolic acidosis but if you look at the uh, osmolol gap typically it lead to osmolol gap because isopropyl alcohol is an osmotically active substance uh, so that is the reason always calculate a osmolol gap in all cases of the metabolic acidosis similarly methanol intoxication typically lead to a classical finding cherry red macula on fundus examination so tomorrow image based exam may examiner will give you one cherry red macula in a patient of acidosis and ask you to make a guess brother now doctor what are the causes of syndrome of inappropriate ad hip secretion now it is very important for us to understand but yeah, what makes ADH get secreted? ADH secretion typically when you are volume contracted, that means dehydrated. If you are volume contracted, dehydrated, a dehydrated person may the pituitary volume, if you are dehydrated, your plasma osmolality will increase. That will stimulate your pituitary to release the antidiuretic hormone. Whatever. But when do you call SADH? Though you are not volume contracted, that means you are euvolemic. Though your plasma osmolality is not elevated or dehydrated, still ADH, if it is produced, then that is called inappropriate ADH secretion. Now, one of the favorite MCQ in the tomorrow's exam is. But yeah, what are the causes of the syndrome of inappropriate ADH secretion? B, C, D, E. B, breathing. That is pulmonary causes. Small cell carcinoma, TB, pneumonia, pulmonary abscess, anything can lead to SADH. C, C for CNS, meningitis, brain abscess, head trauma can lead to SADH. D, D for drugs, clofibrate, phenothiazine, please don't forget, carbamazepine. They are the Batti Varnevala cheese. Hey, SADH is a very high yield topic. I have told you three category topics. PG entrance, I have told you that you have to be bored. But my job is to make your life simpler. Right? There is nothing like a complicated rocket science. There is nothing entrance preparation. Mein. You should be sure to say no to some topics. Yes to some topics, obsessive about certain topics. So only that is what a discipline you need to build. 100 topics inevitably come from 100, MC, 100 uh, MCQs from 100 topics. 100 MCQs from 200 topics. Another 100 MCQs from 650 topics. So our first things first is a one of the effective habits of highly effective people. So that is the reason we should be very sure. So yeah. SADH is a topic, it is among the 650 topics, may one of the topic is SADH, don't forget. 
मैं इसके पहले बोला ना मेटाबॉलिक एसिड और एल्कोलोसिस आई मीन एसिड बेस्ड डिस्टरबेंसेस दैट इज अ टॉपिक इन द फर्स्ट 100 में आने वाले टॉपिक माइकार्डियल इंफेक्शन फर्स्ट 100 में आने वाला टॉपिक ईसीजी फर्स्ट 100 में आने वाला टॉपिक है सो बिफोर यू पिक अप अ टॉपिक इटसेल्फ ड्यूरिंग योर प्रिपरेशन बी वेरी श्योर योर टाइम इज मनी यू शुड नो व्हाट टू रीड व्हाट टू नॉट रीड राइट सो डॉक्टर एक्टॉपिक lymphoma sarcoma nahi pade to hum jayenge coma and duodenal cancer pancreatic cancer they are all the causes of the sadh b c d e you have to be 100% sure about now one of the favorite questions of the examiner mere pyare doctor hyponatremia how will you clinically approach how do you treat hyponatremia very common scenario If the patient is symptomatic with hyponatremia, altered sensorium may have, dull hair, drowsy hair, how do you treat? You infuse hypertonic saline and rapidly do a correction, two milli equivalents per liter per hour for two to three hours. Two milli equivalent per liter per hour for two to three hours. Hypertonic saline. One important point here we should learn. Baya. 70 के जी आदमी में कितना पानी होता रे 60 परसेंट इज बॉडी वाटर सो यू हैव 42 टू लीटर्स ऑफ बॉडी वाटर इन ए 70 के जी इंडिविजुअल नाउ यूर नॉर्मल सोडियम इज हाउ मच बिटवीन 135 थर्टी फाइव टू वन फोर्टी फाइव मिली इक्वलेंस डॉक्टर मिली इक्वलेंस पर लीटर सो सपोज इफ द पेशेंट इज है 120 milli equivalents per liter severe hyponatremia is there he is symptomatic right so you need to increase his serum sodium level right so how much you need to increase from 120 you have to take it to 135 that means 15 milli equivalents per liter you have to increase then only his altered sensorium chale jayega then only his altered sensorium will improve barabar now how many liters is there 42 liters every liter how much you need to increase 15 so totally how much sodium will equivalent you have to give 42 into 15 is equal to approximately 600 ml equivalent sodium dena padta hai normal saline lao sister lily ओ मेरे प्यारे सिस्टर लिली नॉर्मल सेलाइन बॉटल लाना नॉर्मल सेलाइन में देर इज नो एम नॉर्मल सेलाइन फिर भी हम इसको नॉर्मल सेलाइन नॉर्मल सेलाइन बोलते जीरो पॉइंट नाइन परसेंट सेलाइन को नॉर्मल सेलाइन बोलते हैं एब नॉर्मल सेलाइन क्या होता है एब नॉर्मल कुछ भी नहीं होता फिर भी हाइपर टोनिक सेलाइन थ्री परसेंट सेलाइन को कहते हैं हाइपर टोनिक सेलाइन राइट सो वन लीटर नॉर्मल सेलाइन में यू हैव वन फिफ्टी फोर मिली इक्वलेंस पर लीटर डॉक्टर सो अगर 600 हंड्रेड मिली इक्वलेंस रिप्लेनिश करना बोले तो कितने लीटर नॉर्मल सलाइन देना पड़ता सरकार चार बॉटल चढ़ाना पड़ता चार लीटर बॉटल चढ़ाए तो 600 हंड्रेड मिली इक्वलेंस चढ़ेगा तब उसका 120 बनेगा 135 अगर चार लीटर चढ़ाए तो नॉर्मल सलाइन वो जिंदा रहता क्या मर जाएगा मर जाएगा किसके वजह से मर जाएगा सरकार वो पलमनरी एडिमा कंजेस्टिव हार्ट फेलियर आके मर जाएगा हाउ डू वॉन्ट किल हिम डू वॉन्ट किल हिम लाइक दैट नो सो यू हैव टू यूज थ्री परसेंट सेलाइन थ्री परसेंट सेलाइन विल हैव ऑलमोस्ट फाइव हंड्रेड एंड फोर्टी मिली इक्वलेंस पर लीटर दैट मीन्स वन लीटर ऑफ द्री परसेंट सेलाइन इज इनफ to increase his 120 ml equivalent per liter to 135 ml equivalent per liter that's the reason whenever patient is acutely symptomatic you have to rapidly drastically correct means then you need to choose 3% hypertonic saline is what you have to remember samajh mein aa gaya barabar now doctor is symptomatic hai patient hyponatremia ke wajah se so how do you want to manage हाइपरवोलीमिया है या यूवोलीमिया है या हाइपोवोलीमिया है देख लो भैया 
हाइपरवोलीमिया में तो गिव ए लूप डायुरेटिक लूप डायुरेटिक लूजस एनएसीएल लूप डायुरेटिक लूजस एनएसीएल एंड आल्सो द फ्लूइड एंड ए वॉल्यूम ओवरलोड स्टेट विल कम डाउन एंड ए हाइपरवोलीमिया विल गेट रिजॉल्व बट इट लूजस मोर वाटर आल्सो सो हाइपरवोलीमिया है तो हाइपोनेट्रीमिया होने के बाद भी एडमिनिस्टर लूप डायरेटिक इफ ही इज यू वोलिमिक देन यू फ्लूड रेस्ट्रिक्ट टू वन लीटर पर डे एडमिनिस्टर लूप डायरेटिक गिव ए हाई सोडियम डाइट और सॉल्ट देन इफ इज हाइपोवलीमिक देन यू नीड टू गिव इन्फ्यूज नॉर्मल सेलाइन इफ ही इज एसिम्टोमेटिक विथ हाइपोनेट्रीमिया सो दैट इज वॉट यू नीड टू रिमेंबर बिफोर वी गो टू स्लीप डॉक्टर लेट एस बी वेरी श्योर ऑन what are the causes of hypernatremia now you should understand only one uh, rizwana ali is asking when is your timing sir tomorrow morning 5 am to 8 am every day morning 5 am to 8 am next to 70 days hum vaada karenge milke padhai karenge 100 mcqs discuss karenge First, I will give you 50 questions. You solve it in about 10 to 12 minutes. Fada fada, apka ek step or answer karo, topic wise. Then I will come and do the discussion. Then another 50 MCQs. Then discussion 100 MCQs. Three hours me. Khatam. That your day will be great day to start with. Full energy ke saath pura din padhai kar sakte hain. So right. So that is the goal. We'll do from tomorrow. Now, doctor. Always remember. a volume overloaded state like edema is synonymous with hypernatremia and a dehydrated state is more often synonymous with hypernatremia simple rule about electrolytes now doctor what are the causes of hypernatremia the you may be using a osmotic diuretic severely led to what subject is asking rizwana microbiology माइक्रोबायोलॉजी ऑलरेडी देर आर 640 गर्मा गर्म एमसीक्यूज इन माइक्रोबायोलॉजी डॉक्टर उसमें ऑलरेडी वी फिनिश्ड अराउंड 200 एमसीक्यूज खत्म किए थे हमारे चाय पे चर्चा प्रोग्राम में शाम एंड अनदर 440 एमसीक्यूज है टॉपिक वाइज क्लासिफाइड एंड कल से उसका भी खत्म करेंगे नेक्स्ट फोर डेज में राइट सो नाउ What are the osmotic diuretics? Mannitol, hyperglycemia, high protein feed, post-optic to diuresis. They're all causes of the osmotic diuresis and that lead to development of hypernatremia. How will you identify that? Typically in them, osmotic diuretic. Okay, but just say, when you have hypernatremia, urinary osmolarity by plasma osmolarity is more than 0.7. Glycosuric patient, etc., etc. urinary osmolarity by plasma osmolarity is more than 0.7 then central diabetes insipidus pituitary kaam nahi kar rahe adh taiyar nahi ho rahe adh khaj nahi hai to water reabsorption nahi ho rahe water chale ja rahe badan se because of that there is a dehydration and that person will become hypernatremic so what are the causes of central diabetes insipidus tumor trauma neurosurgery infection then how will you know this hypernatremia is because of central diabetes insipidus in this people urine osmolarity by plasma osmolarity typically is less than 0.7 less than 0.7 and urine osmolarity should be increasing if you happen to administer vasopressin if you administer vasopressin the urine osmolarity should increase by 50% then it is a central diabetes insipidus problem is no vasopressin production there is nephrogenic diabetes insipidus may the urine osmolarity will not change even after you give vasopressin but even nephrogenic diabetes insipidus also how is the urinary osmolarity by plasma osmolarity doctor uh, typically it is less than 0.7 periya swami Pritika Periya Swami is asking, sir, will the class will be every day from 11 p.m. to 12 a.m. 
I will get a uh, 11 a see a uh, simple thing uh, Prithika please call our helpline 9 triple zero लिख रहे हैं ना पेन है ना हाथ में 9 triple zero 8 6 8 3 5 6 please give a call ask them to include you into our whatsapp study group we have about 80 whatsapp study groups with nearly 20,000 neat pg seriously preparing aspirants and every day we have about 100 mcqs posted every 5 minutes one mcq and there is a discussion happening and uh, every time we start the session we will post an alert into this uh, whatsapp study group and uh, you you can be able to join so 5 a.m to 8 a.m every day hum, we will make it a standard practice or din mein jab bhi mujhe time milega i will try to conduct a live class so if you are there part of our whatsapp study group you will be getting a alert also don't forget to click on the bell button in the subscriber youtube subscriber and uh, that will also give you one alert from YouTube. And uh, we have online MBBS.com video library. Take an opportunity to buy a subscription. You have 30,000 MCQs discussed topic wise like this. 2 lakh PowerPoint slides available. Every Sunday grand test with discussion you have available and all our YouTube live discussions become archived and the video library become rich and richer every day right and there are about thousand plus hours of video discussion on 953 high yield topics in online mbbs.com next 70 days ke liye for a throwaway price you will be able to get the buy the subscription so please do call our helpline right now doctor Nephrogenic diabetes insipidus. What are the causes, doctor? Uh, renal failure. Don't forget. Favorite question of the examiner, doctor. Hypercalcemia. Hypercalcemia will make kidneys become unresponsive to ADH. It is one of the dyslipidemia easily correctable, which lead to development of nephrogenic diabetes. Insipidus. Demiclocyclin. Demiclocyclin. Lithium can lead to nephrogenic diabetes insipidus. Similarly, sickle cell anemia typically lead to tubular dysfunction. Tubular dysfunction, sickle cell anemia, and uh, that also lead to development of nephrogenic diabetes insipidus is what you have to emphatically remember now before we go to sleep doctors electrolytes are the rats that roar like lions when it comes to mortality ye chota rat ke jaise chote cheeze hote hain hyperkalemia hyponatremia hypernatremia isko correction karna sahi tarah nahi kare to right this rat will start roaring like a lion and while killing the patient. So that is the reason you have to be very sure to manage the dyselectolytemia. So how do you treat hyperkalemia, doctor? See big, see big potassium drop, K drop. See calcium gluconate. Pahela dil ko raksha karo, calcium gluconate. Give bicarbonate. If you treat acidosis, hyperkalemia also will resolve. Beta agonists like albuterol will push the potassium inside. Insulin also pushes the potassium inside. And if you are giving insulin, patient will go into hypoglycemia. So give glucose. And calixalate, which is a potassium binder. Then diuretic and dialysis. That is the treatment of hyperkalemia. Now, doctor, definitely aane wala question hai. ECG findings in hyperkalemia. फटाफट बोलो पीकड टी वेव तिरुपति बालाजी को जय पीकड टी वेव एडु कुंडलवाडा वेंकटरमणा गोविंदा गोविंदा पीकड टी वेव हाइपरकैलीमिया राइट क्यूआरएस प्रोलॉन्ग्ड पीआर प्रोलॉन्ग्ड एंड द पी वेव बिकम लो पी वेव 
this is the typical hyperkalemia is what you need to basically remember gotcha doctor now another favorite question before we go to sleep be very sure what are the causes of hypocalcemia remember hippocall hypoparathyroidism always calcium synonymous with parathormone hyperparathyroidism is equal to hypercalcemia hypoparathyroidism is equal to hypo hypocalcemia you remember right ha hypomagnesemia unless you correct magnesium potassium aapka baat sunega nahi there is a reason always in the intensive care unit whenever your nurse lily comes to you and say hey doctor see the potassium jitne baar correct karo fir bhi next day morning ko potassium low it is remaining low then you tell sister lily don't be silly please go and check even magnesium so you will find a concomitant hypomagnesemia unless you correct the magnesium first your hypokalemia won't get corrected that is very important similarly infection can lead to development of hypocalcemia so hypomagnesemia ko ek prabhav hai kya hai hypomagnesemia lead to hypomagnesemia lead to hypokalemia hypomagnesemia also predisposes to hypocalcemia hypocalcemia is what you need to remember gotcha now pancreatitis can lead to hypocalcemia then any rapid volume expansion lead to hypocalcemia chronic kidney disease hypocalcemia any absorption abnormalities and loop diuretics lead to development of hypocalcemia aur ek baar main bol raha hu doctor 100% guarantee topic hai dyslipidemias without that there is no question paper definitely examiner puchega sodium potassium calcium magnesium hypo hyper hypo hyper everything you should know 100 mein one inevitable mcq aayega barabar now what are the causes of hypercalcemia doctor chimpanzee is very famous uh, pneumonia see calcium supplementation hyperparathyroidism iatrogenic milk alkali syndrome pages disease pages disease mein hota hai hypercalcemia you are not going to forget right then edison's disease acromegaly mein hypercalcemia neoplasms hypercalcemia jollinger ellison hypercalcemia excess vitamin a excess vitamin d sarcoidosis sarcoidosis causes of the hypercalcemia there is no shortcut there is no soft way there is no easy way success is always a good number of times an outcome of a good labor a good labor is inevitable doctor be very sure and be very prepared don't expect any miracle right the miracle is there within you you need to wake up and rise and then prepare for the exam so thank you all sunil fatima jogren uh husna everybody enjoy a great dream a great aspiration that you are by february you are md resident that is the only deal between us good night and tomorrow once more early morning 5 am hum shuru karenge next 70 days ka wonderful journey for the neat pg 2020 preparation you're all the part of dr murli barajwad super 2000 batch in the top 2000 ranks you should stand and uh, give me a call that you made it right good night to everybody thank you